Chapter 7 New Prospects and a New Friendship At the start of my fourth year in high school, smaller classes emerged to larger ones, and much to my delight I was seeing a lot more of my friends in the classroom as well as out. For example, I was in the same English class with two other members of my social circle as well as Alex, Brad, on whom I've already spoke about, and another dear friend of mine in my beloved social circle, who I don't think I've surprisingly mentioned until now, called Luke. A slim-looking person with a Jack Glad personality and a shitload of gel, and you could tell he was from, shall we say, a very wealthy background. Imagine if David Tennant and Richard Branson created a clone together, and you'd be pretty much on the money. As I write this book, chapter by chapter, I have the great opportunity of exploring past friendships, and as I look back I cannot help but look in fondness, as I remember the times I valued with Luke. Out of all my friendships, he was the one who tended to understand my humour more than most. With Luke, Brad, Alex and Will, all in one class at the same time, for probably the first time, it's safe to say that our little clique dominated the, the class in terms of atmosphere. Whenever someone would walk in our English class, it was sometimes chaotic, a lot of the times loud, but always funny. When the bell rang at the end of every English lesson, you were always guaranteed a laugh. I do feel I should mention that all this leniency to, shall we say, our create, uh, that allowed us to be creatively free was all thanks to a certain English teacher called Mr Grime. As long as we got the work done, he would always maintain an extremely relaxed approach towards us, but I distinctively remember having two English teachers throughout that year. Mr Grime, who I've already mentioned, and a woman called Miss Farrell who had, shall we say, a very evocative dress sense. I so start that again. I discovered I had a talent for making speeches. The only time I ever received an A-star in the entirety of my life was when I was doing a speaking and listening exam. I don't know what it is about my voice, but bizarrely enough, people seem gravitated towards it. Maybe it was the context of what I was saying. Or maybe it was the mere sound of my voice. I honestly could not say, either now or back then. But looking back, I think it was best I didn't know. My, di my new discovered talent of, s of sounding more interesting than I probably was wasn't the only event that happened in my fourth year. It should be noted, I also became acquainted with someone that I would eventually be very good friends with, who was also in my year. Oliver Howarth. In truth, it's safe to say that Oliver and me knew of each other's existences far before this particular day. But on one afternoon, that seemed like any other, we finally engaged in what I, engaged in what I found extremely engaging conversation, as well as great company. You see, as strange as this sounds, but I always perceived Oliver to contain a wisdom Beyond his years, a description that I feel is overused today. But back then, having such a quality at the age of 15, it truly was remarkable. Looking back, I do partially re regret continuously pestering him for guidance, as I now realise he probably had enough on his plate, especially at that age, who didn't? But nevertheless, he would always give me sound advice, but above all, but above all that, the aspect I will always thank him for was no matter what issues I happened to be facing on that particular day, assuming I was the only one with insecurities, Oliver was, would always respond with patience and understanding. I will always thank him for that. I don't specifically remember the exact day in my fourth year, but if I had to speculate, it was towards the end I would spend this particular school day with my friends as I usually did, messing about, spending time with them, distracting each other, then at the end of cert some certain school days, I would always have a chat with Oliver. We, would so we, we soon discovered we had some very strong mutual interest. One particular day, I spent time with Danny's crew. At the end of the day, I saw Oliver yet again. And as soon as I arrived home, 
I would always go straight to my room and put on music. On this day, it was Fleetwood Mac. To my mother and father's annoyance, I would always put it on full whack. I couldn't remember which exact song it was. Was it Tell Me Lies? Was it Everywhere? Or maybe they were telling me about a certain Seven Wonders. Your guess is as good as mine. But on this day, I remember Stevie Nicks and Lindsay Buckingham singing to me as I glared out the window, wondering, is this truly the happiest I've ever been? And you know what? It probably was. Thank you for listening to this chapter. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, Dancing Bear out.